Rods are then simultaneously rotated into the desired straight coronal plane orientation. External three or four point pressure helps in larger curves. The dorsal black line on the rod should be centralized on top. The desired longitudinal rod position is verified, taking into account curve lengthening or shortening with correction. Stiffer curves require the use of rod rotation vice grips. Next, the cross connector is fully tightened. Derotators are applied to the screws, starting with the right thoracic cluster. The plugs within the screws are not yet fully tightened, which facilitates the derotation. The slots in the handles of the derotators are aligned manually. A handle linkage rod slides through the innermost set of slots in the handles. A comb is applied to the cluster on the right thoracic curve. Another comb is applied to the left thoracolumbar curve. If a comb does not drop on easily, use the second groove on the double grooved side of the comb. Now, the other side of the comb drops into place easily. The two curves are slowly derotated simultaneously by rotating the derotators in opposing directions over approximately 15 seconds. With desired axial plane correction achieved, cluster alignment rods are added to hold the correction in place. Holding a slight overcorrection will account for elastic rebound in the construct when instruments are removed. A vertebral horizontalizer instrument can then be used to level non-level vertebrae, providing simultaneous single-level compression and distraction with no net spinal cord elongation. A T-handled horizontalizer is available, if so desired. Once the principal major curves have been addressed, attention is turned to the cephalad foundation. The thoracolumbar cluster instruments are removed, and the derotators are set up and linked on the upper foundation. Derotation is carried out between the two thoracic curves. In a tight space, for example, the concave side of the left upper thoracic curve, a wedge distractor can be used between the two right concave side derotators. The wedge distractor is inserted down to the rod and angulated longitudinally. The two plugs are tightened provisionally then the wedge distractor is removed. Horizontalization is completed with a small horizontalizer and the plugs are tightened with a torque driver. All of the instruments are removed. This completes our three-dimensional scoliosis correction. As a global leader in the spine industry, Biomet Spine provides a unique three-dimensional spinal deformity correction system.
This innovative stepwise progressive technique facilitates efficient spinal deformity correction. For further information on Biomet Spine, please contact your local representative or call Biomet Spine at 800-526-2579.